G'day folks. Oh, I figured I'd better do something on this car. <laughs> Try and fix this idle problem. It's not undrivable, but it's just a bit annoying. Yeah, it runs rough and the um, RPMs don't stabilise when you quickly go from run to back to idle. Like I'll just blip the throttle a little bit and see what it does. Uh, it's, it's cooled down. When it's cold, straight off a cold start, it's fine. But if I've driven it for a bit and it's hot, it'll play up. Yeah, I'm going to have to let it run for a bit, warm up. Okay, so now it'll do it, and particularly because it's in gear. So if I just tap the gas, it'll drop, start dipping. Yeah, somewhat. Oh no, it's still in park. There we go. It'll stabilise, but it'll be slow. That's in reverse. Drive same. So even the alternator loses excitation at that speed and the AC compressor would snap out too. Yeah. Can't be good for it. I'll check the idle air controller first and then go from there. It might be a uh, programming bug. Um, it's notably happened after I had the battery off to do the um, dash cluster, but I think it might have been starting to do that earlier. There were a couple of times when it was a bit hesitant going from idle to run, um, as far as throttle position goes, so maybe it is a throttle position sensor thing. Um, I imagine it'd be dropping spark more erratically or just dying out if it was a crankshaft position sensor issue. Um, the 3 Series I had, the 323 would do that and it would just lose all cylinders for no apparent reason until you got out and stopped the engine and tweaked the uh, crank position sensor, like moved it a little bit closer to the, um, the harmonic balancer end or just twisted it around even was enough just to settle it back in again and it would work fine for another week or so until it played up again or it got hot. But this is more like an idle air control issue. It's probably letting too much in when it's going back to idle. Although the exhaust sounds very rich, so maybe it's giving too much fuel when it goes back to idle. It's flooding it a bit. Who knows, we'll find out when I pull it to bits. Okay, well this is what I'm after. It doesn't look very carboned up, but it's a bit greasy and grimy in there. I'm going to clean it out and take the uh, solenoid off it too. We'll uh, give that a thorough clean up and inspection. There's a part number of some description on there. Should be good. Okay, well there wasn't an awful lot of crud in this thing. Um, yeah, it doesn't seem like enough to cause a problem, but you never know. I'd say the thing needs a good throttle body clean as well, so I'm going to pull all that apart. I notice there's no mass airflow meter on it, so there's got to be something in there for metering airflow, unless this is part of it, but this is just really a solenoid with an idle air control bypass. So, it's kind of odd, but yeah, I'll clean the uh, throttle body up and hopefully not hurt anything in the process. I just want to know where the airflow metering device is so that I can uh, avoid spraying it with uh, carby cleaner. Uh, some of them are fairly sensitive, especially the hot wire ones. So yeah, we'll see how we go. In case you're wondering how these work, it's essentially just a solenoid operated um, valve. There's a valve seat up between these two ports with that connected to that rod is the valve itself. So when the solenoid throws out, it pushes the valve open, like the inlet valve on an engine, and allows air to bypass through this passageway. Inside there is just a return spring. You can hear it bounce on, bounce on its spring. So, it's cleaner. It wouldn't do that before when I tapped it on the bench. It could have just been muck on the seat, but it didn't actually uh, make any noises, so maybe it was stuck ever so slightly, maybe ever so slightly sticking, but either way I'll give everything else a good clean up and hopefully that'll fix it. There's not really much else to these, apart from the electronics themselves. Uh, it could be a programming thing, because 
as I said, I had the battery off and recharged the battery while it was off, out of the car, or disconnected. Reconnected everything again, and it just started going downhill from there. So something funny going on. I don't like the way the um, the way it seems to be losing charge overnight. Like I think the battery's actually getting a bit crook, and the alternator is probably struggling to keep it charged because this morning it was a bit very sluggish to start and this is after cleaning all the terminals and everything on it so I think it might be time for a new battery as people say you're lucky to get a few years out of them and this battery's probably three or four years old so about time to change it yeah, and that's where this little guy lives on here and all that's doing is bypassing air through the throttle body because your throttle butterflies through there and there's the TPS the throttle position sensor which is a potentiometer and there's a, um, well, there's no mass airflow meter. That's just a flex hose. And there's nothing in there. So it's got me buggered how they do it. I mean, how does the engine know how much air is going through it? Maybe it's all uh, based on the TPS, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, the reading from the TPS will tell it how much to add or remove. Maybe that's a problem. Might be a dirty wiper or a dirty track. Hmm. Yeah, it's interesting to find there's no uh, mass airflow meter. It's not in here either. It's like something died in there, but there's no math meter. It's all just flex hose. I notice this has a uh, sand and scroll compressor, like one of the ones I dismantled. Not a bad compressor. It definitely needs new belts though. And that idler. Yeah. And put electric fans in too, we'll get rid of this power hog. These things use a lot of horsepower. <coughs> Factory hoses. <laughs> Coolant temperature sensors, there's three of them. Hmm. Nice oily TX valve block for the air conditioning. It's R R12 in there, so either got to find some R12 and just top it up. But given the amount of oil that's been coming out of there, I don't know how much time the compressor's got on it either. I'll run it till something dies. It still works fine as it is. But yeah, not something you find in Europe apparently. I've got a lot of comments from my European viewers about how we got such big engines and things, whereas they can't really afford to even own them. Get taxed out of existence. Okay, got that flex hose off. Let's see, mm, sort of see. There's a rather nasty build up of gunk in there. Yeah, it's a bit hard to sell. Too dark. I'll show you what comes out of it on the rag. <laughs> mm, I think I'm going to have to take that thing off. <laughs> That's just part of it. All down here, it's all this um, PCV residue, oil residue. Mm. Okay, well, I didn't take the throttle body off, I just gave it a really thorough in, in place clean and uh, did a quick test run and it'd idle about 1100 and if I blip the throttle it'll go up to five, uh, 1500 and stay there. So I've resealed, or I didn't re, I didn't use gasket goo on the um, IAC block when I put it back in so now I've taken it off again and put a bit of uh, hard setting number four or number five Loctite um, gasket goo on it and set it back down again, we'll see what it does. very high and it's dropped back a bit but it's still about 1100 rpm yeah see now I've just touched the throttle and it's come up and stayed up and in gear idle in gear is about 800. 
but that's where it would normally idle out of gear but of course now that I've cleaned up the throttle body it's made a bit of a difference and now back up to 1100 rpm uh, it might just be an adjustment thing maybe someone's tweaked it since the car's well someone's obviously probably tuned it and tweaked it because it was just the idle was dropping slower and slower as the body got dirty um, I don't think this has ever had a throttle body clean in its life I really doubt it so I might just adjust that uh, idle stop screw and see what that does but I'm curious as to whether or not I got water into the throttle position sensor when I washed the engine down for roadworthy as it is now I can't get a roadworthy on it because of the bloody idle problem whether it was hunting at idle or idling high they'd still fail it so I'm not going to take this guy this car back to that guy until it's a hundred percent otherwise he's just going to keep bloody uh, picking things he's already got to do another primary inspection on the bloody thing well that's what happens when people recommend mechanics <laughs> you end up with one that's picky as hell <laughs>